Okay. Welcome back to Let's Talk About It, a podcast about leadership development. I'm your host, Felipe. Kevin. Claudia. And um, today we have a very special guest. Um, today we are joined by a very special guest. He is a, he is a lifetime politician and advocate, a best-selling <laughs> author, an attorney, an activist, and has recently been nominated to be inducted into the Hall of Distingu Distinguished Alumni at Rutgers University, our president and founder. Yeah former New Jersey Senator Raymond J. Lesniak. Well, thank you. Thank you all. But I wasn't a lifetime politician. I didn't get involved in politics until after I got out of law school. <laughs> but other than that, everything you said was accurate. I mean, that that's long enough, right? <laughs> that's long enough. Some people say too long. So, Senator, <laughs> good to see you. How are you? How you been? Pretty good. I just got back from my yoga session. I go to yoga a couple times a week. I really enjoy it. So I'm feeling good. So I have a question for you, Senator sure. Lesniak. So um, you were in office for many years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you were working as a senator for New Jersey. When you left office, you decided to open up the Institute in 2018. Sure. What led you to start a nonprofit organization that focused mm -hmm. on developing the next generation of leaders? Sure. Well, first of all, it was needed. Um, if you see what's going on in uh, politics today, especially in Washington, what we lack is leadership. And most importantly, um, from the younger generation. And I believe that by having an institute, as the Lesniak Institute for American Leadership is here at Kane University, uh, we can reach out and develop the future leaders, if you will, the future of Ray Lesniaks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The future Ray Lesniaks. I love that. Yeah, me too. So, <laughs> Senate. But, but I just want to add something. I don't think there will be another Raymond Lesnick ever. Huh. With all the things that you have done, there's there's no one that's going to compare to what you have done so far. I mean, you know, I mean, things come and go. I mean, Magic Johnson, uh, Larry Bird, and now you have uh, um, whoever is uh, whose name escapes me. What's the big guy? Uh, LeBron James. Oh, uh, LeBron James. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not comparing myself to those folks, by the way. Um, but um, yeah, well, thank you. I, I have done some things that um, have been particularly memorable. And, um, and one of the reasons for the Institute is to give others an opportunity to, uh, to do likewise and even better. Yeah. And I'm sure they will be. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the Institute, one of the main causes is environmental protection. And during your time yeah. as chair of the Environmental Protection Committee, you sponsored some very influential and groundbreaking uh, environmental protection laws. Can you sure. talk a little bit about that and what influenced your fight for the environment? Well, yeah, thank you. Um, I, I, I have a very specific incident uh, that happened in Elizabeth. Uh, there was an explosion right around the block from where I was born on, on Front Street. There was illegally stored toxic waste hundreds of barrels and one night they just exploded into the air uh toxic fume went up to elizabeth staten island uh L lower manhattan and that's got me to say hey something we have to we have to do something about that new jersey was actually swimming in toxic waste and so i with the help of governor tom kane um you know i worked across the aisle as did he and um, I sponsored what's called the Environmental Cleanup Responsibility Act. And that was groundbreaking. Uh, no other state has it, had it, or has it. Uh, but any uh, commercial properties uh, that are sold or if the business is closed down, they have to get a, a clean bill of health from the Department of Environmental Protection and um, if uh, there is contamination on the site, and there are hundreds, literally, excuse me, thousands of sites that were cleaned up uh, as a result of this. And I really, it, indeed, the business community opposed me at the time because they didn't want to slow down transactions because the, they had to clean up the contamination first. Uh, but now they're very grateful for the fact that it really, you know, uh, paved the way for, not paved the way, but uh, or to use, opened up 
the way for uh, an ad additional economic development that would not have been possible. Plus the fact, uh, not to mention the fact that it would be, not have been good, not only for the environment, but people's health as well. Honestly, I would go with paved the way. I feel like <laughs> you definitely paved the way in terms of environmental protection, especially in New Jersey. Like we're one of the leading states for environmental protection in the United States. Um, so I think you definitely paved the way. Where do you think that we should be moving forward with, you know, protecting the environment and legislation? Yeah, well, I think the most important thing nowadays, uh, nowadays, always from the get go, you know, is climate change. I mean, we see uh, the effects, the, the real life effects of, of the violent changes in climate uh, that we hadn't seen in the past. And it's because of global warming. Uh, the the o oceans are getting warmer, and which means uh, uh, wind is being generated faster. Um, and um, turbulence is, we see it in wildfires that, that start. There's all kinds of bad things. As a matter of fact, uh, Rutgers, Rutgers, if you will, this is on TV, isn't it? I mean, people can see it. Oh, there it is. There's the camera. By the way, I'll be going to see Rutgers beat Northwestern tonight in basketball. So um, in, any, in any event, yes, yeah, studies have shown uh, that if we don't, if the world doesn't get very serious about uh, doing things that, about uh, green gas emissions, uh, that um, within 30 years, maybe 15% of New Jersey will be underwater. Wow. Yeah, that's not good. So, Senator, yes. at the time where you were fighting for environmental rights, yeah. animal protection rights, it really wasn't really that popular. No, no. So what made you like stand up for those causes, and yeah. how was it like having so much like conflict within you know, mm. the Senate and all that? Yeah, very interesting question. I'm a fighter. Um, I grew up a fighter. My dad had to um, quit school in the eighth grade uh, to work to help his family work on the docks. And, you know, he, he had an uphill battle his entire life. And I guess that rubbed off on me. And when I see um, somebody being abused or some issue that uh, needs to be changed, uh, the bigger the fight, the, uh, the more I go, the more difficult the fight, uh, and the, the more important it is, uh, the more I s sink my teeth into it and use both my legislative skills and my legal skills to, to get things done. Yeah, and I think that's something that we all, like, admire about well, you. Thank you. Yeah, your persistence and your leadership, definitely one of the, one of the things. Thank you, and I haven't stopped. As a matter of fact, uh, in my memoir, um, I write uh, the final chapter who's yet to be written, and that's the reason why I established the Lesniak Institute. I'm glad you guys are here with us uh, because um, I couldn't just play golf all day. You know, I, there are still many causes that uh, uh, we get behind uh, and to, to champion in the legislature, in, in, in my, I, I'm still practicing law, and legal battles, um, and um, it keeps me on. You know, <clears throat> one of the things that I, one of you, one of the things that I've that I like about your book, mm -hmm. and you also made another book about this. It's your winning for the sports betting. Yes, and was... just like you mentioned about being an underdog, and you you fight it and fight it. No, nobody believes me. I, I all the legal experts. The sports experts say, well, oh, this is going nowhere. Lesniak doesn't have a chance. The NFL uh, counsel for the, for the uh, uh, NFL said there's no way, perhaps, that that was the law that I had got overturned that, that forbid, uh, prevented any sports betting, except in uh, Atlantic City and, and, and Nevada. Um, but I lost eight times, <laughs> finally got to the Supreme Court and won. So, Senators, do you think the people of New Jersey should be thanking you for, like, all those Super Bowl bets? And Well, I think they, they should have a statue for me going on way into, <laughs> you know, by where Trump uh, Plaza was instead of Trump. Yeah. Lesniak uh, signed up there. people really know that, <laughs> that. You're the reason why sports betting is legal in New Jersey. That's yeah, and well, in America, in wow. many states, 
And by the way, the reason why we did it, and I mentioned on Attic City, because four casinos have closed. You know, it was really losing business and race, Monmouth Racetrack and the Meadowlands Racetrack were on the verge of closing. And uh, it's estimated that close to 20,000 jobs were restored uh, because those industries were revitalized as a result of sports betting. Well, I'll... My fight against the mob? I like that one. <laughs> yeah, you could, well, what's your fight against the mob? Do you mean that, like the like the Sopranos? Because recently, recently yeah. I've been watching the Sopranos, and you know, I know that it was back in the days, and I and I bet you that it was during your time that um, you know it was. Oh, the Sopranos yeah, the, was in New Jersey, right? It was. Yeah. It is based in New Jersey, and, well, every, and if you watch the Sopranos, is even from episode one, it just goes through yeah. all the highways that you commonly drive already. So yeah, talk and to the, us about the, the, the mob. The County family and Johnny Riggy, right in Elizabeth. Uh, they control the organized crime and particularly the garbage industry. And uh, a friend of mine's uh, relative, his body was in the uh, trunk of a car on the Gothels Bridge in Elizabeth um, because they moved into a territory that they weren't supposed to be in because it was mob controlled. Um, so I passed a very strict licensing law drove them drove them out of business and it was it was not only because of the the mob control but because there wasn't any control and not just uh solid waste but hazardous waste like uh it was like the story i told about uh, chemical control which was the name of the place that exploded um so i did it for environmental reasons uh as a uh, in addition to driving the mob uh, out of the that industry in, in the state of New Jersey, wow. that was fun. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. <laughs> so you seem to have fought a lot of long battles. You're not afraid to continue. Like I after have, you lose, you you're known to keep fighting. That's I have. No, I have no fear. I have no fear. One of the biggest, probably one of the biggest cases ever in New Jersey, and we just celebrated actually the tenth mm -hmm. uh, year anniversary, anniversary of. Uh, of of marriage equality in the state of New Jersey. By the way, that's one that I didn't, I didn't win. Uh, but we set the stage uh, for winning. Uh, but when I first uh, proposed that legislation along with uh, Senator Weinberg, and we put it up for a vote in the Senate, we got um, 14 out of 40 senators. Wow. Um, um, 13 out of, out of 24 Democrats. Democrats weren't even supporting it. We got one uh, Republican vote. Um, but a again, we kept uh, we kept fighting and ultimately uh, got a decision uh, based on a on a um, on a United States Supreme Court case and the New Jersey Constitution. And uh, now we and, and, and I had the first uh, same sex marriage in my house. Mm -hmm. um, and that was that was wonderful. And yeah, as I said, uh, that 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 was something that I, I just couldn't understand why two people in love, you know, couldn't have the same relationship just because they're gay uh, that anyone else could. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember during the event, um, a lot of the people that were there were the people who were involved in making marriage equality actually happen. Yeah. And they would all mention that Selena had a big part. Yeah, that was, yeah. Um, excuse me. I particularly... Uh, Day after Valentine's Day, uh, my my wife died four years ago. It'll be five years July third, um, and, and and suddenly she had no uh, outwardly complaints. She was forty three years old, but she had arterial sclerosis, this you know silent killer. Um, but she was the one who got me uh, really to be a champion of uh, marriage equality, um, and she was uh, chair of the uh, New Jersey Civil Rights Commission. And um, uh, she lit a fire under me, and along with Stephen Goldstein and a lot of other people, um, we, we, made, we made the fight and, uh, and we won, thinking it would turn out. That's great. Yeah, it's so important to have somebody to support you and push you to really be the best that you uh, can be. And I know that you definitely do that for us at the Institute now. So um, thank you for that. You definitely push us to, you know, continue improving and continue our fight.
which is amazing. So this one, this is a really personal question as I, I am a college dropout and you're one of the most, um, you are I'm your hero, times. right? Because I dropped out twice. Yeah, I was just, I was just going to say that you drop out twice from college. What advice would you give all the students that are feeling stuck in their career path? Well, the, the advice I give to, I, and I teach a class here at Kane University, and the advice I give to uh, students in, in, for questions like this is the first thing is make sure that whatever you're doing makes you happy. And then I tell the John Lennon story. John Lennon was a Beatle, if you guys th didn't know that. Okay, <laughs> they're young. But <laughs> I think it wasn't one of our book tours. Uh, okay. John Lennon. Who's John Lennon? Yeah. Well, anyway, in, in high school, the teacher gave the class an assignment to um, uh, write down um, what you want to be. You know, they're only in high school. What do you want to be in the future? And he wrote down, I want to be happy. Hmm. And the teacher said, John, you didn't understand the assignment. And Lennon said, no, you don't understand life. And I try to, um, I do try to, uh, you know, say, convey the same message. Most important thing you ask about people being stuck in, in college, and make, make sure you're doing what, what, what makes you feel good about yourself and, and brings you joy. And um, keep, keep at it. And you know, if, as long as you're in that direction, you have to succeed. It's, it's, it, you can't fail if, you, if you're always thinking about doing what brings you joy. Mm -hmm. That's oh, great advice. Yeah, that is. What so. advice would you have to people who are not happy and they're in their careers, supposedly? What advice would you give them to kind of, you know, find their way? Don't worry, be happy. <laughs> no, I, you know, just uh, don't, don't get stuck in things that don't bring you happiness. Simple as that. And if you look at life that way, things have to work out ultimately, right? Yeah, this is true. I can tell. I mean, I can say by experience since I, you know, I drop out at, at, at an early stage, and then I didn't find what I was good at until probably the past four years, and especially now working here for two years, uh, doing working with the media, working with the videos, you know, working especially uh, side by side with you. I've come to really enjoy my job, but also enjoy the skills that I've learned through also, you know, on my own, learning things on my own, and also working here and practicing all of my knowledge here. And I can still continue to learn single, like day by day on what's new, what's, what's, uh, what can I do to make my videos better, and how I can reach other people using the skills and pause, also help in other nonprofits kind of do the same thing. I want to I want to be able to help nonprofits kind of use media for this well, purpose. Well, so I, that's as, what you yeah, said. Yeah, as, as an example, what about Operation Santa? Doesn't that bring joy and happiness into your lives? Mm -hmm. Felipe, you were, uh, you know, you really uh, enjoyed uh, sp speaking to the families and the kids, mm -hmm. over 100 uh, deserving kids uh, who we give presents. Some don't get um, uh, a, a present at all except for us, and that's something else that Selena was behind, and uh, she loved it, uh, and we keep it going every single, every single year, and, and it, that's what I'm saying, by, it brings us joy by bringing other people joy. Most definitely. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I love my job. Okay. And Operation yeah. Santa kind of just, like it really brought everything together for me, mm. um, uh -huh. and it really showed me like what the Institute is really all about I, I, it was honestly, it was an event that really changed my perspective in a lot of things. And I never knew like, you know, something as simple as giving a kid a gift could really make their whole day or their whole Christmas. I never thought you had it in you until I saw that, by the way. You really dug in and on an individual basis uh, with the kids. And I could see the joy in your face uh, throughout the whole evening. Yeah, thank you, Senator. Yeah, I mean, 
I definitely um, made it like a priority of mine to be one with the families. I think that was mm -hmm. my main priority. Yes. And the overall event was so successful because of Kevin and Claudia as well. Well, wait until Pride Day in Asbury Park, where the Lesniak Institute, for the first time, is going to have a float. And we're going to decorate the float with uh, pictures uh, that uh, I have and Selena have done uh, to promote uh, um, LGBTQ rights. And uh, it's, it's going to be lots of fun. Decorating it is going to be fun. Mm. Are you excited for this? What? Are you excited? Very much so. Yeah, can't you see the uh, glow in my eyes? I'm really, because um, I've always participated, uh, Selena and I have always always participated in the event in Asbury Park. It's a, it's a, it's a great event. But we would have a, a table for, for ourselves or um, and uh, greet people and participate in all the activities. But we never had a float. So this is going to be fun. As I say, it will be as much fun decorating the float as the parade itself. So. Yep. And we're going to have that pink Jeep pulling us, too, which is pretty cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so isn't something else happening uh, significant in April? Yeah, I mean, let's talk about what you have going on right now, Senator. Um, like, like my induction into the Rutgers Hall of Distinguished yeah. Alumni? Did you bring that up? Oh, I, I did. I did say it in the introduction, but you did. I, I did. Oh, but, I missed uh, it. I do. I do want to first before, before right. we get to that. Can we talk about um, two things that you have going on right now? My golf game. No. No. Okay. The bear hunt. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I'm suing, and it's bigger than the bear hunt. Um, New Jersey's Fish and Game Council is dominated by hunting interest, and they're supposed to conserve wildlife. And all they're interested in, for the most part, is to uh, generate as much hunting uh, possibilities rather than humane uh, ways for, for us to live in harmony with, uh, with deers and bears and, and, um, and our fish and other wildlife, other little critters and animals that God put on, on the face of this earth to enjoy along with us. So um, again, uh, it's one of my challenges where nobody believes I can win. <laughs> uh, try me on this one. <laughs> uh, it's a constitutional challenge that says that, uh, that I believe that uh, it violates the New Jersey Articles 2 and 3 of the New Jersey Constitution uh, to have a uh, private organization, the Federation of New Jersey Sportsmen, uh, developing public policy. Uh, they're a private organization. They have their own individual, uh, in this case, hunting interests, but it could be anything. It would be the same, it would be the same if the Humane Society uh, had uh, a majority of, 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 of the members. We, we, uh, public policy is developed by the Constitution of the state of New Jersey by public entities. And the sportsman's club is hardly a public entity. So I lost at the trial level. It was a case of first impression. I didn't expect to win, but I'm appealing it. And hopefully by next year's bear hunt, we will have a new fish and game council, we'll, which will incorporate uh, humane ways for bears and uh, our residents to live in harmony. So just to summarize for the people that don't really understand, the fish and game council are the people who are in charge of the hunting in New Jersey. Correct, right? uh, yes. And most of the members there, which is your main argument here, is that they're hunters, most yep. of the members. And, and they're there to promote hunting. Exactly. I'm not against hunting, um, but it's not, it's not fair. Um, the, um, I, I, I'm not against hunting for food, but uh, I've, I've traveled the world. I've eaten at many very good restaurants, and a lot of restaurants, I've never seen bear on the menu. The thing is, um, what the way I see it is, the council, they're biased towards hunting. And no matter what, even if they come up with other solutions that will give you, you know, and other animal advocates uh, reasons, so okay, we're gonna do it this way, it's gonna be more humane, but it will still continue to be biased. And the whole argument is like, for to make decisions on a non-biased 
So yeah, and, 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 that, and that's why the Constitution requires that public policy be established by public entities, not by individual uh, private uh, entities, which have their own interest uh, uh, to, to promote rather than the public's interest. Right. And this is not, I mean, you have, you had a history of fighting for animal welfare and, and this is really admirable because also you, you did the same last year for the deer hunt. I did. But, um, again, that's another example of the fish and game council being out of control on behalf of hunters. Uh, there are ways to control the deer population by, uh, by darting and sterilizing, um, but the Fish and Game Council said you can only do that if you get prior notification of property owners within 2,000 feet of where you're doing it. And the, the way this is done in other states, I mean, deers run here, there, there, and um, there's no way you can even identify what properties, yet let alone get prior consent of everyone within 2,000 feet. But that's to ensure that the only way the deer population can be controlled, uh, according to the Fish and Game Council, i.e. the Sportsman Federation of Sportsmen's Club, is to kill them. I mean, I know at Kane there's deers running around everywhere on campus. Mm -hmm. Like you walk around, you see a deer over there, a deer over there, so... I, there is definitely a humane way to go about it. And, there is. Um, there, there is. The, 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 the really only problem with deer, deer, for the most part, although in farming areas, there are some people concerned because they eat their, their flowers in the backyard. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about that, but I'd rather have the deer yeah. uh, alive. Yeah. Um, you know, plant something else that the deer don't eat. And actually, that's true. That's another, that's a, a, a way to keep uh, deer in their natural habitat. Yeah. But people uh, said the same thing about the bears. Just put exactly. your trash back in, like exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Keep your trash in bear-resistant containers if you're yeah. in bear country, and you you won't be attracting bears into your neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. I know we had a meeting yesterday, and we talked about puppy mills. Oh, um, and there's a new bill S two ninety seven that got introduced in the twenty twenty four session. Um, so Senator Stack, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Great, a great animal advocate and a very good senator and mayor uh, from, from Union City. But um, yeah, the, the, there are these mills in, in other states where dogs and cats are, are, are bred in very inhumane, uh, unhealthy con, uh, conditions and overbred. And uh, there's financing tricks that are used that people wind up uh, can hand, handling the expense of a dog that they bought in a store, and um, and why not instead of um, going to a retail store adopting all these animals that are are available for adopt adoption? I've uh, I've always had my my dogs uh, have always gotten I've gotten from uh, places uh, shelters or rescue organizations, um, and they're they're. I, I love uh, uh, adopting dogs. I think that's that's uh, a adds to the pleasure that you get from them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're all big dog lovers here. Uh, we yeah. all have dogs. And well, I don't know forget I've Charlotte. Charlotte, the cat lady. She <laughs> she loves the uh, um, cats, cats, and we uh, we're promoting uh, uh, community cat legislation that instead of starving them, which some municipalities are doing by banning stock by fining people who, who feed the, the, the feral cats. Uh, I did it in my neighborhood, trap, neuter, and release. Mm -hmm. no, no cats in my neighborhood anymore. That's a humane way to, um, to deal with them. Yeah, something we push a lot um, here at the Institute is to adopt and don't shop. Right, yeah. Um, and you could find like any dog that you want. Just go to the adoption center. There's like tons of dogs. I think some of them are even like begging people to take the dogs away because they're so like packed. Oh, mm -hmm. no, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and some of those dogs are puppy mill dogs that, you know, people just couldn't take care of or got messed up throughout the way. So they're like, oh, we don't want you anymore. And you just go over there. 
So exactly, that's what happens. And and New York State just banned uh, retail uh, stores from selling uh, dogs and cats and rabbits. So why can't New Jersey? Yeah, absolutely. Senator, so just I know you have one more thing going on, and um, you have a trip coming up. You're Which going to one? Senegal. <laughs> Senegal, I'm really looking forward. Can you talk uh, a little bit about that? that trip? Sure. So um, a friend of mine is going on this trip and said, "Hey, you want to go uh, to Senegal?" I said, "Why would I go to Senegal?" I said, "Wait a second. You know, I won the Humane uh, uh, Human Rights Award in France. There's a competition of thousands of lawyers." to promote a human rights uh, cause, which I did on uh, abolishing the death penalty. And the fellow who came in second was a young lawyer from Senegal. And I'll be seeing him there. Uh, I looked him up, he's a very prominent lawyer. I thought he was gonna be president of the, of the country at some point in time. Maybe when I see him there we'll talk. But also in Senegal there is an island right off the coast of Senegal, Gore Island, where literally millions, millions of Africans were brought there, went through there over three centuries uh, to be transported to uh, the Americas mostly to be slaves. So there's a museum there and uh, 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 this is um, um, uh, uh, Black, History. Black History, excuse me, yeah. Black History Month and so you know, I'll be learning a lot about black history. I'll be able to take it back. Spoke to uh, uh, Councilwoman Pat, P Patricia Augusti, uh, and um, she's been there. That surprised me. I didn't know anybody went to Gore Island wow. in, uh, in Senegal. Pat Perkins, Augusti. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. Pat Perkins, yeah. All right, so to the moment we've all been waiting for. Senator, I see that you are repping your Scarlet Knights <laughs> right now. And you have an upcoming event where you're going to be inducted into the Rutgers Hall of Distinguished Alumni. We'd love to hear you talk a little bit about that. You know, what led you to that moment and mm -hmm. really why you're going to be there, what an honor it is sure. to be there. Well, I've been nominated in the past. I uh, haven't made the cut, <laughs> which was very disappointing That's kind to of great. me. But, um, yeah, but uh, better late than never. It's not even late, I shouldn't even say that. I'm very excited. It's only given to four or five a year and what we have, what, 30,000 graduates a year. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's quite an honor because those numbers keep pil piling up. Those people go on to the various careers. And I'm glad that uh, my accomplishments uh, in, um, you know, in the legislature and, uh, and beyond don't forget, I also have a recovery school that I started. Mm -hmm. First one in state of New Jersey. So, you know, it's, it's a great honor uh, for, for me to be, uh, you know, inducted. And, and what I say is I talked about me dropping out twice of Rutgers. And I said Rutgers, I, I say that Rutgers didn't give up on me. And neither did I. So tell me, how's the? Do you know the process when you get in? Um, when you get your like, is it a reward? Is it like a plaque, or they put your picture? I have like, no idea. I have no idea. We're gonna find out when we're there on on April twenty fifth. Is that the day? April twenty fifth. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll find out before that. But um, we they they want to do a video mm -hmm. um, that, that they'll show at, at the uh, of me at work. Mm -hmm. in the Senate, I'm looking forward to, to doing that. And uh, a bunch of my friends will, um, will be there to, uh, to, uh, uh, to share the, the honor uh, along with me. Yeah. Yeah, it's I, such a milestone in your is. life. It really is. is. Um, I feel like this is just as good as when you put your name on the star, like when you go to Hollywood and you see a star on that's the That's next. Uh, that, <laughs> Don't forget, I am a uh, Grammy-nominated accordion player. <laughs> really? Yeah. I didn't know that. You know, I was gonna put Grammy-nominated on your bio. I think you told me that. <laughs> yeah, because I think uh, yeah, I have yeah, a think passion for music. I told, I told um, Claudia that you played accordion. In the polka band, polka yeah. Band, yeah. So. yeah. But just to kind of emphasize on that Rutgers thing, um, it's such a big deal. I, I remember helping you out with your application to get into mm -hmm. the Hall of Distinguished Alumni. And it took them like six to eight months. So they do their extensive research on their oh, inductees. Sure yeah, and they make sure that like that like they get specific people mm -hmm. to get in. And I think 
like it's amazing that well, now it's like your time. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, we are. To say the least. This, yeah. I, I, this is a great honor for me. I, I, I feel it. Mm -hmm. yeah. As I said, I mean, I, you know, Rutgers, I bleed Rutgers blood for some reason. I don't know. I just love the school. It was the only school I, I uh, even applied to uh, out, really? out of college, yeah. And, um, and I go to the games, the football games, the basketball games. And, uh, yeah, you got to take fun. me to a game. Of course, absolutely. You get tickets, right? Well, yeah, but, you know, it's sold out, and uh, there's a long line waiting for me to take them to the games. You know that. <laughs> uh, well, uh, football games or not, we could go to, we could, we, we could all tailgate before a football game. Oh, that'd be oh, fun. That'd be fun. Yeah. Right. Um, no, really, um, just wanted to say people could purchase tickets. Um, we do have the link to purchase tickets for April 25th um, for the Rutgers Distinguished Hall Alumni event, where we will be honoring Senator Lesniak, so. Well, I, I hope everyone can come and, and enjoy it. I'm really looking forward to the event. Yeah, it's going to be a wonderful night. Thank it's going to be really great. Cool. So do you guys have any other questions for Senator Lesniak? Nope. Your birthday's coming up, too. My birthday? Yeah. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Senator. Hey, I'm, I'm old enough to run for president. Oh, <laughs> you really are. You so, yeah, we could talk about the president presidential election, but I don't think we. Had another that. another yeah. show. Yeah, yeah, that's going to take in a few yes. another time. But um, honestly, Senator, thank you so much well, for joining us today. Um, mm -hmm. You know, before we let you go, do you want to share anything else? Do you want to plug anything? Do you want to talk about anything else? Uh, the only thing is, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, vacation next week before I go to Senegal. Uh, I'm going to visit friends in uh, St. Martin and also play a little few rounds of golf while I'm there. So. Awesome. Well, this has been um, another episode of Let's Talk About It, and we will see you guys later. Bye. Bye-bye.